Giving is an opportunity for you to partner in what the Lord is doing in this ministry. And remember, when you give, you get to partake under the grace of this house, and God loves a cheerful giver. Our God is a God of sacrifice, so He honors your sacrifice. Go to ProfitLovey.com and follow the instructions on the screen. And thank you so much for all your giving. Hey, Revelation Nation, quick PSA. Neither Revelation Church or Prophet Lovey will reach out to you directly in regards to donations. Or one-on-ones. Or private prophecy. So for all giving information, please visit our official website, prophetlovey.com or revelationchurchla.org. We love you, family. And Jesus loves you more. Stay safe out there. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and continue to spread the gospel with your participation. Don't forget to turn on your notifications so you don't miss a single teaching all year long. We love you. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Hola, mi gente. Esperemos que Revelation Nation esté mejor que nunca. Queremos darles una precaución para cuando estén dando, donando y sembrando el trabajo del Señor en nuestra iglesia. Si alguien les contacta recorriendo fondos, solicitando cualquier tipo de donación monetaria, les queremos avisar que no es el profeta ni nadie en la iglesia. Nosotros nunca jamás les escribiríamos pidiendo dinero, así que para evitar todo tipo de estafa, por favor, solo usen las plataformas oficiales para donar a la iglesia. Se pueden encontrar en profitlovey.com o en revelationchurchla.org Dale mi gente que Dios les bendiga God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. I am so excited to be with you all, and I believe that the Lord Jesus is going to bless you. Your life will never be the same after this amazing teaching in the presence of God. You will be elevated. You will be transformed. You will be shifted because God is going to put in you something so beautiful, something so new that you will never be the same again. I want you to share this. I want you to like this video because this will bring such a tremendous enlightenment. You'll be enlightened by the Spirit of God to truly comprehend where your battles are coming from and why you're losing. What does it mean to provoke demons? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am joined by my firstborn, my only son, uh, my son, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my twin is with me today. It's going to be a fantastic time. Amen. So I want you to be ready. Just type where you're watching from and tell me where you're watching from so that we can get this thing going. And uh, the Lord Jesus will definitely be glorified and be lifted. This is going to be a good time. This is going to be a very, very good time. And the Lord Jesus will be glorified. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, beautiful. The comments are flying, so I can't even. <laughs> okay, since Andrew's going to read for me, I don't even need glasses. All right. So we are going to be talking about provoking demons. Now, this is a very important lesson because I have seen so many people destroyed because of lack of understanding this. Everything spiritual must be understood before you engage with it. Even God Almighty, you must understand what you're getting into when you come into 
communion with him or what people commonly like to say relationship with him you need to understand who you are engaging with so that you know how to engage with them so that you can maintain your relationship with him most of us approach god the wrong way even though we are born again even though we love jesus our precious lord but we don't benefit from salvation except eternal life because we don't know how to engage with god if you don't understand how to engage with somebody your relationship will suffer because every relationship has guidelines there are principles there are boundaries let me say that there are boundaries in how things operate and this is in relationship or, or in relation to anything the laws of the city of simi valley are different from los angeles county yes. why there are things that are tolerated here but they are not tolerated there is this making sense yes that's good there are things that your taxes are cheaper here then in ventura county than anywhere else it is easier for you to get your license to carry in ventura county than los angeles county yet los angeles county has more crime ventura county is better but still the laws are different because the jurisdiction of who is controlling that area is different Now you need to understand this by the spirit of God. Daniel was in Babylon. Daniel was in Babylon. But Babylon was controlled by a spirit. That demon was called the prince of the power of the air. This spirit had sole jurisdiction of that whole nation even though god is the one that raised nebuchadnezzar and he told the children of israel repent through jeremiah because i am raising a king in the east he will come and capture you and enslave you because you are disobeying me so who gave him power to enslave the, the these own people god did but what enslaved them was not god was a spirit god gave permission to do so because the spirit that took them in was the same spirit that was trying to change them the four hebrew boys were continually going through troubles and trials they were first of all turn into eunuchs meaning they were castrated they couldn't have children that they, they were completely i know people don't even know that that these guys were made eunuchs That's why Daniel has no kids. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, none of them had children. Why? They were made eunuchs. They were castrated. Why? Because it was at the art of war. I'm going to enslave you. I'm going to use your skill, but I can't allow you to have children because if you have children, they may avenge you. So to protect myself, I can't allow you to have children. So that's what they would do. But these were men of God. This were children of God. But there was an issue. What was the issue? They were in a jurisdiction that was controlled by a spirit. And they knew better than to provoke something that they're in the belly of the beast. it was wisdom you think they didn't know that there was a spirit in the country they absolutely knew that is why when they were brought in they refused to eat from the king's table why because the table was dedicated to other gods they knew if they eat it they would be defiled their discernment saved them but because the king was after their 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 gift from god he still kept them but the goal of the spirits in the nation was either to kill them or to change them now gabriel comes from heaven to give daniel a message concerning the visions he saw because he did not understand them 
But here's the problem now. Gabriel comes from heaven. He has authority. But he comes to a jurisdiction that is not his. It did not matter how powerful he was. He had no power in that place. He needed a superior authority than himself. To change the trajectory of what God intended for Daniel to receive. Now you think about it. God is sending a messenger that can be stopped. Now you didn't hear what I said. When people tell you what is for you will come to you, it's a lie. <laughs> there is no miracle with your name on it. It's a lie. It's complete fool foolery. There's no truth to it. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. If you don't know how to fight for what is yours, you're not getting it. It's that simple. And if somebody else notices there is a blessing and they fight for it, guess what? They will get that blessing. Because the blessing is supposed to go to somebody. Whoever has the ability to know it, to see it, is the one that will benefit from it. Let me show you something. Go to the book of Acts. We're going to go to Acts uh, chapter 19 from verse 11 to 17. Big Drew can read that for me. Acts 19, 11 to 17. Acts 19, 11 to 17. All right, go for it. <coughs> And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Uh -huh. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs mm -hmm. or aprons. Mm -hmm. And the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Stop right there before you continue. No, you can go to the next verse, but just hold on for a second. Paul is so endowed by God that lifeless things that have come in contact with the spirit have jurisdiction and power over sicknesses, diseases, and demons. Are you hearing that? Now keep going. Watch this. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Stop right there. So Jews had exorcists. Jesus wasn't the first one to cast out demons. This is a practice that has been there. The magnitude in which Jesus did it, they had never seen it. But to cast out demons was already there. Even Jesus said, If you say I'm casting out demons by Beelzebub, then whom do your children cast out demons by? So exorcism was practiced already. Deliverance is not a new thing. But notice, there was no ministry of deliverance. Okay, keep going. <laughs> and there were seven sons of Sceva, mm -hmm. of one Sceva, a Jew and a chief of priests, which did so. Notice, their father Sceva was a master exorcist. And his children were also Doing the same thing their father was doing. Mm. So these are men that understood the principles of casting out and dealing with devils. But the sons were looking at, mm, yes, we've been casting out demons, but the way this poor guy is doing it, man, so efficient, so powerful. These guys were not uh, sinners. They were children of a priest. They lived right. Are you hearing me? Yes. So they decided to take those who are ev evil spirits and start dealing with them. Keep going. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? Mm-hmm. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped onto, hmm? and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, mm -hmm. and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Notice they used the name of Jesus and they were beaten and left naked. 
So who was who was now mad? They brought somebody with 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 uh, uh, demons manifesting, going crazy, and they left like crazy people. So what exactly happened? Was it the name of Jesus they used that wasn't powerful? Absolutely not. The name of Jesus is eternally powerful. I'll say that again. The name of the Lord Jesus is eternally powerful. In that name, sicknesses are healed, diseases are cured, the dead are raised, the lost are found. That name is the name above every name. But the problem is, they dragged Jesus into a fight. He didn't send them to fight. You will never defeat a demon if you weren't looking for him. You didn't hear what I said. You will never overcome a demon that you went to challenge on your own. It doesn't matter how full of the Holy Spirit you are. Christians are not bullies even in the spirit. We don't just start fights. Why is that? Because we only do what the master has sent us to do. We don't do anything outside what the master has ordained for us to do. Because we will be protected. We will be empowered. We will have a calvary of angels with us if we are on our assignment. But if we go outside of our assignment, there is no guarantee for protection for us. Why? If Gabriel came from heaven, a mighty prince of heaven, came from heaven and he was sent on assignment, but he was resisted. How much for you who can go without being sent? If you are sent, you will find challenges, but you will overcome. What if you go without being sent? So many of your pastors, your evangelists, your apostles, your prophets have started fights where they should have never entered. Jesus goes into a certain city. And when he arrives on the shore, a demon runs to him and says, Jesus... Son of God, what do you want with us? Jesus said, come out of him. Notice the demon didn't come out. The demon said, please, I pray you, don't send us to the pit. They started negotiating, but Jesus already said, come out. <laughs> Y'all are not listening to what I'm trying to tell you. You know, when you, Musa, can you find it for me, please? You see, I, I need you to read scripture with sober, be awake. Amen. Don't be woke, be awake. Amen. How can Jesus say, come out, and the demon doesn't come out, the demon starts negotiating? Mm. But I already said, come out. Mm. It is better for me to say, come out, and the demon say, I'm not coming out, or to say, uh, 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 Please don't send me out. It happens even to me when I'm casting out demons. Okay? But you can't resist. How do you resist the king of glory? You don't resist Jesus. Listen to this. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the, whatever that name is. Verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Notice the writer says unclean, mm -hmm. not unclean spirits, unclean spirit, singular. So you notice the, the discernment in progression, even for Jesus the Lord. Why? Because he was both man and he was God. Mm -hmm. Notice this, let's continue. Who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, nor with chains, no, no not with chains, verse 4. 
because he had been often bound with what? And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the, that word broken into pieces, neither could any man tame him. Mm. Verse 5. And always night and day he was in the, in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. That's why if you find somebody cutting themselves, no, it's a demon. But when he saw Jesus afar, he ran and worshipped him. Who was worshipping demons? <laughs> demons worship better than some Christians. How do we know? Read. Look at this. And cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, thou son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. <laughs> a demon is worshipping. Jesus, son of God, <laughs> what do you want with me? Bow to the ground. I pray don't torment me. But when he says don't torment me, Jesus immediately, what is Jesus' response? Look, look at this. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Jesus is saying, come out of the man the demon is worshipping. Mm. Wow. Mm. <laughs> I know you never read it like that. But it's plain. Keep, let's keep going. Look at this. Look at this. And he asked him, what is thy name? He said, come out. The demon is not coming out saying, I, I, Jesus, son of God, I, I, I adjure you. Don't torment me. That was his prayer. Please don't torment me. But Jesus is already saying, come out. But the guy didn't leave. He's still negotiating. Notice this. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Notice Jesus discerned him, yeah. one. Yeah. Then he asked him, what is your name? So when we ask demons, what is your name? You're not actually asking for the name he is called. You are asking for his assignment because your name is your assignment. Yeah. Jesus is called the Messiah because he's the Savior. He's the one that is coming to die. Do you understand? But there are certain spirits you need to actually know their identity to deal with them. Okay, let's keep going. Watch this. And he besought him much. Much meaning he was praying. The demon was praying a lot. He besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. They were asking not to leave the country because it was their jurisdiction. I, you know what? Let's, let's, let's go off life. Imagine Jesus is dealing with a demon. He's saying, come out. The demon is saying, I am praying. Please, don't send us out of this country. Now, let me ask you. Why wouldn't Jesus send them out of the country? Because if he sends them out of the country, then that country becomes free. Because these are the spirits that are tormenting people in the country. They just happen to live in one man. But even though they leave this man, they will get another man. When Jesus was coming on the boat, the storm came into the water that the boat was almost drowned. Who do you think was doing that? It's the same spirit that was on the land because they didn't want Jesus to come. That is why Jesus had to rebuke the wind and to command the storm to come down because there were spirits that didn't want Jesus to go into the country. Yeah. So when Jesus gets on the shore, the spirits come and present themselves immediately. Uh-oh. Now watch this. Watch it. Let's keep going. Now there was, there was there nigh unto them a mountain, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, all of them, not just one. When the other guys were exposed, they are now all, be, they are all praying. Let's keep going. Watch this. Saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. 
They know Jesus is the master. What he says goes. But they were saying, ah, you can't send us out of this country. We are begging you. Don't allow us to leave this country. And don't send us to the pit. Don't cast us out of this country. This is where we are supposed to be. The reason why the demons came to present themselves before Jesus, they thought judgment day had come. So they thought the hour had come, then they realized, no, the hour hasn't come. So they started saying, please don't torment us then. That's the reason why they ran and said, Son of the living God, what do you want with us? Please don't, don't torment us. Please don't send us to the pit. Please don't cast us out, out of this country. We are begging you. Allow us to enter the swine. They were pleading to remain in a jurisdiction. I want to say something, but I feel like I shouldn't say it. The Bible says all things work for your good, right? Yes. Is that true? Yes. Uh -uh, you're not answering me. <laughs> Either you believe the word of God or you don't. Yes. Do all things work for your good? Yes. Say it with your chest. Yes. Say it 100%. Yes. Everything works for what? Now, if you read the actual translation, it says everything is employed to serve your purpose. Are you listening to this? So even demons. Nah, I know, I know you haven't been taught these things. The wicked have a purpose. Hundred percent. It takes a level of maturity to understand this. A young Christian will say, no, the devil, whatever. God used the devil to promote Job. Mm -hmm. Your troubles, God allowed demons to, to fight you, to bring you to Jesus. Don't you know that? Yes. We don't like demons. God doesn't like them either. But everything serves his purpose, period. All things work for your good. Everything. Amen. All. Not some things. All things. Amen. Who led Jesus to the wilderness to be tempted? God. God took him. The spirit of God led him to meet Satan. And after he met the devil, what does the Bible say? Angels came and ministered unto him. And he left the wilderness in the power of the spirit. When he went into the wilderness, he was led by the spirit. When he left the wilderness, he left in the power of the spirit. That he did such great signs and wonders that fame of him went across the country. This is Luke chapter 4. Now you ask yourself, so if the devil never encountered him, there will be no promotion. That's why it's funny to me when Christians talk about the devil being powerful. I'm like, you guys don't understand this game. The game has been rigged by God from the beginning. Everything is working for you. That's what grace is. You know grace is unfair. Grace is not fair. There's nothing fair about grace. I will love whom I love. I will hate who I hate. There's no, nothing fair about that. Imagine demons are getting their answer, they are getting an answer to a prayer. You are struggling with prayer because you are praying outside of your assignment. These demons knew where they are supposed to. Wow. Uh oh. I'm waiting for somebody to chop up this clip. It will be funny. <laughs> They'll say, You see, he's a Satanist, he supports the demons. <laughs> Foolishness. That's why you need spiritual maturity. 
It's mandatory. There's no option. There's no way out of it. It's the only way. So notice this. Let's go back to scripture. Let's go back to scripture. And fourth, when Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea, they were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Notice this spirit were water spirits that were in the land going into the sea. That is why the storm came to Jesus. Because these spirits, notice, this man was not always full of these spirits. They would torment him, they would leave him, then he would cry. And then they will come back into him. So at night, that night, they left him to attack Jesus in the sea to stop him from coming. Then when they failed, they returned into their place. Then when Jesus showed up, they went and presented themselves. Ah, please don't torment us. Because when they attacked the boat, they didn't know Jesus was inside until they were rebuked. Now Jesus comes. Instead of getting rid of the demons, he allows them to stay in there, but he removes them from the individual. Now you imagine if you went into that territory and you tried to destroy those spirits and remove them from that land and it is not ordained for them to leave, you will never win. Listen, if you're going to clap for the Lord, clap like you mean it. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it 100. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. You will not win. How? It is ordained for them to be there. If you read the book of Revelations, it says that when the bottomless pit will be opened, They are evil spirits that came out and they were given power to do certain things on the earth. There is no spirit that can function on earth without jurisdiction. It has to be authorized because everything is under the control of Elohim. Everything. That's why we are safe. Because everything is controlled by heaven. Do you really think, you know, like we are given opportunities by God to deal with spirits, to judge evil spirits, to do certain things. But what about the times we are not praying? What do you think is keeping us safe? Jurisdiction. Amen. Amen. The whole time Job is in the land of Uz, not Oz. <laughs> and no demon ever tried him. He had jurisdiction. So they all watched him for a fire and just left him. Now somebody will say it's because he had angelic protection. That's not true. Israel is also protected by God, mm. but they were tried. Yeah. Do you know why Israel has so many battles? Because that land never belonged to the people. It belonged to the Canaanites. It belonged to other people. And God had made a promise to Abraham that this is the land I want to give to you. So the children of Israel to enter that land, they had to overcome so many spirits that controlled that territory. And they did overcome and they took over the land. But until now, what is fighting Israel is spirits mm. that still want to inhabit the place, but the jurisdiction has been given over. Mm. That is why no one can beat Israel. Even if they are wrong in what they do, you can't take away something that is somebody's jurisdiction, it's somebody's right. You can't. That is why you cannot lose your place in God because it has been given you. Jesus said, those whom my father has put in my hand, nobody can pluck them out. The handkerchief of Paul has jurisdiction. The sons of Sceva have no jurisdiction. How can a lifeless thing connected to somebody have more power than a human being? Authority and power. You cannot overcome a demon just by the name of Jesus. You need to also have spiritual jurisdiction. Amen. And you also need to have authority over that spirit. 
you need to also have power over that spirit. If you come to a spirit in the name of Jesus, but your ranking is low, you will struggle. It will take God's grace to intervene for you, but you're not winning that fight. There's a certain apostle, I won't mention his name, attacks prophets a lot. Somebody sent me a video of him trying to deliver somebody and the demon beat him up. All I'm trying to explain to you is this. And that person is a man of God. I'm not saying they're not a man of God. Don't criticize what you can't do. We are all not perfect. But our ranking in God, our, our position in God, where God has called us to be, has nothing to do with our doing, has everything to do with God's own sovereign grace and love and mercy and his plan for our life. Yep. If ranking was earned just by you doing something, then everybody would be powerful, but it doesn't work like that. I was talking to my little sister Benny yesterday and we were talking about churches and I was saying, listen, there are pastors that will never have a mega chunk God's will. There are people who are called to affect the local scene. There are people who are called to affect the national scene. And there are people who are called to affect the international scene. Amen. Not every prophet, not every pastor, not every bishop, not every evangelist will touch the world. Some people will touch a small corner, but that corner will touch the world. Why? We are not all called to do the same thing. That is why there is so much envy in the church and competition in the church because people are trying to be other people. I should be the one. I should be the one that have inf influence. No, maybe you're not called to this thing. My brother, Apostle Daniel Adams, I love you so much. That's, my, that's, that's a real one. A man I love so much. So, so, so capture this by the Spirit of God. A Christian should never provoke demons. A man or a woman of God deals with spirits that God has permitted you to tackle. Know your spiritual level, please. I was told one of my favorite mamas in the church, I was told she went to pray somewhere and, and, and to attack certain spirits and she's in the hospital. I cried. I said, why did she go and do that? She ended up in the hospital. We had to pray. I had to send people to go and pray for her and whatever. By God's grace, she came out, but her health was affected. Why? Who told you to go and challenge these spirits? I have seen this so many times. There was a young man in a church that I used to go to. The man of, of that house is called Pastor Leslie Peters. He's one of my fathers. In, since I came to America, I've been in two churches. I've never church hoped in my life. The first church was where Apostle Gershon was a, was a pastor and it was a church founded by Bishop Donko. When that church dissolved, I went to Pastor Leslie Peter's church or Apostle Leslie Peter's, let me say it correctly. This man's son was my friend, closest friend, the only friend I had when I moved here. I served in his church until God released me to do my assignment. I was not a pastor in that church. I cleaned in that church. I set up instruments in that church. I played drums in that church. I did sound in that church. Whatever they needed me to do. Nobody knew my gift in the church. Yet I could see, I could deliver people, I could do all that. Nobody knew anything. Stayed quiet like I wasn't even there. The man of God knew what I could do. But I never asked for the spotlight. Not once. When God released me to do what he asked me to do, I spoke to him. He said, go ahead. God is with you. That's how I have been. In that church, there's a young man that I knew that saw how God was using me. And he went to the street to start evangelizing, which is a good thing. He saw a man on a wheelchair, went and laid hands on him, come out of, of, of this man. The man rose up of the wheelchair and he fell down. The leg of that man that was affected, his leg became affected and he could not walk. We had to deliver him for him now to restore his health. Why? He went to challenge a spirit that he had no right fighting. Smacked. 
Jesus only delivered people that were sent to him by his father or where he was sent to preach. Amen. He didn't just stand randomly. You come here, you have a demon. Come out. No, he didn't do that. You don't go fighting looking for demons. It's a mistake. You don't do that. It's the most foolish thing. Listen, I can deal with a lot of demons. I know where I am in the spirit. I don't even do that. Not because I'm afraid of the devil. I don't fear the devil. I've seen Lucifer face to face. I'm not afraid of, of the devil at all. There is nothing in me that fears the devil. Nothing at all. But I know better not to go and start something that God didn't send me. Most of you are affected, especially ministers and those who are zealous for God. You went ahead of your time. And what ended up happening is you created more problems for yourself. And you started noticing finances drying, this drying, this becoming difficult, that becoming difficult. Why? You went to look for a battle where you were not sent. Nobody sent you there. Stop. It's crazy. You need to know where you are. Are we going to destroy the works of the enemy? Absolutely. But where we are sent, not where we send ourselves. Provoking demons is a real thing. One of the common ways people provoke demons is calling on the name of Jesus, our Lord, and not being about that Jesus life. You just made yourself a target. Because if I am in my house, and I start saying, every power in this, in this environment, in this neighborhood, in this city, in the name of Jesus, I pull you down. And I am gossiping, I am lying, I am stealing, I am doing this and that and that. Those demons, the moment I say that, demons are on high alert. Hey, who is fighting us? Mm. Then they check to see if you delivered power. Wow. Whether you did or not, now they know there is somebody that is challenging them. They start looking for a way to strike you. So just in case you will get it right, you don't take them down. They will take you down before you take them down. Wow. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. The name of Jesus is a weapon. If I swing a gun at you, like she's a soldier, swing a gun at you and I put it away, man, I'm shooting you. I won't play with you. You might get me. I will get you before you get me. Same thing with demons. You swing a gun at me and you play around and you, miss, you shoot and you misfire. Man, my opportunity, I will not miss. I will not miss. I am definitely not missing. It's better for you to ask God for grace and mercy and these things. That is why you have to be spiritually led. What does it mean to be spiritually led? When you are a child of the Spirit... Even your utterance in prayer is influenced by the Spirit of God. There are times you can be in prayer. Oh, Father, I worship you. There is no God like you. Father, who can be compared to you? Oh, Father, you are worshiping. All of a sudden, your tongues change. And you don't know why you just got angry. Every power. Notice what happened. God empowered your spirit to fight a spirit that you are lifted by this. It wasn't just right now, Father, I take authority. Pick your authority. You don't pick up authority. Either you have it or you don't. <coughs> we need to stop this nonsense of there is no in the Bible that says pick up authority. Why was it on the floor? up 
your authority. Why is it on the floor? I've never met a soldier putting their weapon, leaving it on the ground, and then when they need it, they pick it up. No, you have it on you at all times. You sleep with it. You know this is life or death. I'm, you don't, oh, oh now you, you need to pick up your authority in Jesus. No, you are a lousy soldier. If you forget your weapon on the ground, then when danger comes, you have to pick it up. Something is wrong with you. You need fivefold ministry because that doesn't make sense. A soldier is always ready. A soldier is always alert. You don't drop your authority. You have it with you all the time. You're always sharpening your tool. You're always oiling your gun. You are aware I shot this amount of rounds. Now I need to clean it to be ready just in case. That is how the life of somebody that is, is fighting, that is in a war, that is the mindset. A wise country doesn't just start wars. They calculate, is this something we can win? If we can't win yet, let's look for a way that we can infiltrate and win. You see, Satan does the Trojan strategy. He knows he can't just come after you because he knows you have the power to bring him down. So he will bring in a Trojan horse and wait for you to slumber. Wow. By you allowing them in, then they destroy you. They don't challenge you to get in. Sin is the Trojan horse that they use mm. to put down your guard and to start playing around and before you know it, they got you. Even demons are wise not to just start attacking you. Because somebody like me, you attack me and I see you in the spirit, I will finish you. Ah, in two seconds, I will finish you. And, and I will know. A hundred percent will know. And I will know exactly where you are and I will deal with you. Seriously. My gift of prophecy doesn't just work in church. So what am I trying to explain to you? Wisdom is the principal thing. As a child of God, wisdom, hear me and hear me well, wisdom is the principal thing. Nothing is more important for a believer, for a child of God, than wisdom. Wisdom ought to be our everything. Amen. I, I don't know if you can hear me. Amen. Wisdom ought to be our everything. If I get up and I start challenging things that I am not sent to deal with, what I have done is I have endangered my whole family. I have endangered those I love. I have put them in a, in a difficult, difficult position. I have put them in a hard place whereby... It will take God himself to deliver. This is why it is dangerous to just go around and laying hands on people. And this is now the importance of also covering, having covering from somebody. You see, God has given you divine covering by whoever your father or your mother in the Lord is. Now, there are people who believe in that and there are people who don't. I believe the Bible. God is called the God of our fathers for a reason. Yes. There's a reason why Paul said, have many instructors but have one father. When I say my fathers, I'm talking about my instructors. I only have one father. I only have one person. What am I trying to tell you? When you have a covering, if you make a mistake, what they have protects you. Amen. 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 Because when you're growing, mistakes will happen. But who will stand in the gap for you? Amen. That is where the importance of covering comes from. That is where the power of covering comes from. That is where the grace of having a covering comes from. Is that you can miss it, 
But because of a covering, you're protected. An example is Solomon brought other gods into Israel. Mm -hmm. God was very angry and God was ready to destroy, completely annihilate Solomon. He came and he said, Solomon, I would have destroyed you, man. Mm. But because of your father, David, not because of you, because of your dad, David, because of David, because of David. Yes. Because of David. Mm. I'm keeping you. These are divine strategies as a child of God you need to have. These are divine strategies as a child of God you need to have. Every soldier or every regiment in the military has a backup. Mm -hmm. Just in case they're not doing well, they can call for backup. Yeah. That is why we have these warships whereby if the people on the ground need air support, they can get support. When you are challenging something and something goes wrong, do you have extra support that can come in? The apostles were in with Jesus and they failed to cast out a demon. The, the sons of Sceva failed to cast out a demon and they almost died. The apostles failed to cast out a demon but there were no repercussions. Do you know why? Jesus was with them. Because of the presence of the master, they were protected. They were kept. That they even asked, Jesus, why couldn't we deal with this? He said, ah, this kind. Meaning you are not at the level to fight this. This is a different kind, not the kinds you've been dealing with. God wants you to, to be empowered. And God wants to empower you by his spirit. God wants to inspire to empower you, to raise you up and to inspire you to set people free. He truly wants to. But we set people free according to the will of the Father, not according to our will. Amen. Why did I plant a church in Simi Valley and not in LA? Why did I not go to Mexico? Why did I not go to Atlanta? If I plant a church right now, in New York or Atlanta, it will be bigger than in LA. LA is huge. Our Revelation Church is killing it. But if I went to New York or something, it will be probably four times bigger than this. That's the truth. Because of the strategic point that it is, everyone from everywhere, that people take flights to get here. We already have a full church, packed church. But if we did the same thing in another city where it is more accessible, people would drive from states to come there. People usually have to plan to come to L.A. from Europe. and so Even if you're coming from Europe, L.A. is still far. Really far. From here to London is longer than from New York to London. Very, very far. So depending on, it doesn't matter where you are, it is actually far. But why didn't I go there? Am I going to plant something down there? Absolutely. I know when. It's just no time. Why have I not done it? Because I don't want a big church. Amen. I want a church where Jesus is. Amen. If it was about accumulating people, I would have done it. I went to New York with, with, with my father and I only, we only told people for three days. I had over four, five thousand people line up in the snow. Waiting to see me. They were chanting, Prophet love you, Prophet love you on the street. Yeah. And only 1900 could, or was it 1800, could fit in. I felt so bad because it wasn't my event, it was my father's event. If it was me, I would have done a bigger arena. Probably Madison Square Garden. I would have literally done some, I don't do small things. I would have done something like that. But why did I not do it? It wasn't my event. But look at how many people are hungry. So if I just wanted to be popular and to use the fame God has given me and the popularity God has given me, I'll just go randomly anywhere and just do events. People don't understand even the revelation nights. Mm -hmm. It is God that tells me where to go. 
I don't decide that stuff. Yeah. Fatima and them know the team always ask, what is God saying? What is God saying? What is God saying? I don't just say, okay, let's look at our statistics. Where are we the most? Po- I've never done anything like that. This is why you have to be very careful. When people come to you for prayer, ask God, Father, do you want me to minister to them? If you want me to minister to them, how would you want me to minister to them? You have to know. When I'm, what, let me tell you, I can prophesy to anyone in church. I can line up the whole church, line up in a line, and I will prophesy to each and every one. I can do that. God is my witness. Mm-hmm. But why do I just go to specific people? Because I will minister to who God wants me to minister to. Amen. Once in a while, somebody will compel my heart and I will ask the Lord, Lord, is it your will for me to, please, if it is not your will, I'm asking, look at their heart, have mercy. Then God will give me the go ahead and I minister to them. But in general, I would not minister to somebody that God doesn't want me to. Why? Because if God will not back me up, then their life is not going to change. Their life will not change. The one who will change their life is not me. It's Jesus. Jesus has to be in it. That's why sometimes people come to church and they expect me to prophesy to them and I won't. I came from so far. Nobody prophesied to me. I'm disappointed. If you came for me, I'm sorry. You should have come for Jesus. That is why I always say, tell Jesus to talk to his servant to minister to you. Don't tell the servant. The servant doesn't represent himself. He represents the master. So, So, don't provoke demons. Please. Don't. You will lose. If you are sent to deal with them, you will win. Whenever the children of Israel went to war that God did not tell them to go to, they lost. That is why they always inquired of the Lord. Are we going to win this battle? Then God will say, I have given them into your hands. Should we go to, should we pursue God will say, don't pursue, or God will say, pursue, because I have given them into your hands. Many of us are no longer led by the Holy Spirit. We lead ourselves. And when things go wrong, we say retaliating spirits. No, you went where God didn't send you. How can a demon retaliate to somebody that's marked it? When you deal with a demon, you should send a memo to hell and say, guys, avoid when you see this face you see her you see him run for your life or else you'll be cast into the pit demons need to tremble when they see you they need to know that is that person you don't mess with but the only way you become like that is you have to understand don't go around praying for people who are in witchcraft don't go around breaking charms go around oh there's a there's a there's a a psychic place i'm gonna go around there and bind those spirits no please don't elijah only challenged the prophets of baal because he was told to for years the baal was baal's prophets were there he never fought them he just preached god when god told him now deal with these guys That's when he went and he challenged them. He didn't just wake up, now I'm going to destroy them. No, does not work like that. Understand where you are in the spirit. Understand, where am I? If you cannot deal with your own little issues, now you want to go and deal with big problems. Ah, please know your place. Come on. And the only way you grow from where you are is to understand where you are. Amen. If you understand where you are, then you can maximize where you're going. Yes. That's good. 
you can maximize. The reason why many prophets are not deep in the prophetic is jurisdiction. There are people who are allowed to see secrets and there are people who are not allowed to see secrets. God himself knows why. Their maturity allows the maturity allows some and some people their maturity doesn't allow them. God knows why. You don't just wake up and you start doing these things. You will destroy yourself. Come out of this foolishness of picking up your authority. Mm. Either you have it or you don't. And if you don't move wisely. Move wisely. Move wisely. This is what the Lord God wants from us. Without understanding that we are in big trouble as a church. Big trouble. Don't fall in love with ministration. Don't fall in love with casting out demons. That's what the disciples were excited about. Demons are obeying us. Don't fall in love in casting out demons. Fall in love with Jesus who can send you to deal with demons. Don't fall in love with the gift of prophecy. Fall in love with Jesus who can speak to you to deliver somebody. If you're not setting people free according to his will, then everything you're doing is vanity. It's vain. Many do these things because they want to be seen. Oh, look at me. Mm -hmm. Look at how powerful I am. I've delivered people from the bondage of this. Uh -uh. Is it you or Jesus? Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to know there is a way to navigate. There is a way to navigate. Even foundational problems. Sorcery and witchcraft that is in the family that you didn't know of. If you have been praying, you are seeing things are not changing. Find somebody with more authority than you, more power than you. Don't keep fighting a battle that you have no power to change. Amen. You see, it takes humility for you to have that kind of wisdom to say, you know what, I'm going to go to Bishop So, Pastor So, Prophet So, Evangelist So, because I have seen them deliver people with such cases, then I know I can get my help from there. But you see, we are being taught, seek God for yourself, do things by yourself. Then what happens is you delay your process over and over, yet you would have gone to somebody who has more than you that could have changed your situation in five minutes. But you're taking 20 years dealing with the same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing, saying, one day, God, you know, the devil has just been fighting me. No, go somewhere where you can get help. Know your place. Amen. Know your place. Amen. If you don't know your place, if you don't know your place, if you don't know your place, life will be very difficult. Mm. Some of you need to repent and tell the Lord, sorry, I went ahead of you. Holy Spirit, you should go ahead of me. You lead and I follow. Because some of you who are watching, you prayed for somebody with a financial problem, now you have financial problems. You prayed for somebody with a certain sickness. Now you're dealing with those sicknesses. So whatever you try to solve, you're, fighting, you're finding yourself trying to fight out of those things. Oh, you did something. That's crazy. Is this making sense so far? You see, I can go into service and I can raise my voice and say every unclean spirit in this place. Ah, and demons will come out of people. Somebody else may go and try the same thing and find maybe one spirit comes out. It's not that they are not empowered by God. Their jurisdiction only allows them to deal with a certain spirit. See, this is a progressive 
growth. It's progressive. You mature. The more faithful you are to Jesus, Jesus increases you. The more you are faithful to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit increases you. You are, you are, you are um, promoted based on your faithfulness. And the principle of faithfulness begins by following what you have been instructed to do. God does not ask for extra curricular activity. He doesn't want it. He said the Levite should carry the ark. Even if the ark is falling, it's the Levite's problem. You touch it, you will die because you are not ordained for it. God wants you to stick to your lane. Please type brother, sister, stick to your lane. Now, please say it like you mean it. Touch your neighbor, say, whether they are brother or sister, tell them, stick to your lane. Uh, Maybe the person behind you, just look at them and say, hey, stick to your lane. Stick to your lane. (laughs) Hallelujah. 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 I, I want to see if there are, can we get five questions from, from YouTube and, and questions also in here. And then we are going to pray. Let's get a few questions. Let's keep the likes going. We are almost at 6,000 people. Let's keep sharing and keep the like buttons going high. Glory be to the Lord Jesus. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Questions, questions, questions. Anyone in here? Okay. You, you want to help? Fatty, you, you, you do the microphone thing. Okay, let's start back there. Okay. Yeah, he's closest. No, no, you need the mic because the other people need it. Too. Is it on? Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. Does the same principle apply to like healing if you're not really... Yes, because in order for you to heal somebody, there's, you have to understand, every issue is caused by a spirit. Every issue is caused by a spirit. So, if every problem is caused by a spirit, even if you're praying for healing, you are removing a spirit that is stopping that body from being healed. An example is somebody can just cut themselves and all of a sudden that cut is not healing. It becomes uh, an ulcer. Yeah. Now you are no longer just dealing with a wound because the natural, uh, the natural uh, instinct of your body is red blood cells will flood that place. They will close it up and the body immediately will start healing. But now the body is being prevented from doing what it's supposed to do. That means there's a spirit in that place. A demon is causing it to be like that. That's why you find many times, I, I, you know, I, I haven't just done a miracle service in a long time. What we are planning is every Monday of every month, it's coming soon, not yet, where it will just be a, a, a healing service whereby we'll do it in the lobby where we line up people, we'll register, it will be once a month, where people with difficult cases, it, there will be no preaching. I will exalt them for like five minutes and then pray for people on the prayer line. The reason why I, I, the, the reason why, um, I haven't done it yet, I'm waiting for the go-ahead of God. It's going to happen this year, but I'm waiting for the go-ahead of God. What I'm trying to explain to you is that Notice, many people testify of healings in the church. Yet I have not prayed for healing in a long time, but people are getting healed. Why? Because once a demon is removed, healing is automatic. That is why you find that Jesus, when he prayed for people, the first thing after he preached is he cast out all devils and healed the sick. You cannot heal without dealing with demons. Is this making sense? Yeah. So whenever you are, f- you are changing something, it's because there is a battle. Something is off somewhere. All right, another question. Okay, that's one. Okay. Okay, so uh-huh. 
Hmm. I've dealt with a lot. I, I'm new to this, but I've accelerated so fast that mm. your word has gave me acknowledgement of what I was experiencing. We thank the Lord Jesus. Huh? Yes. Um, so I've experienced multiple types of evil spirits, a demon, and I don't know if it's because it's my jurisdiction or I don't, I don't quite understand what I'm doing wrong. Okay, it's very simple. There are two things that happen to a believer. Number one, you need to understand your life is hidden in Christ, in God. What does that mean? If I am indeed in Christ, every battle that comes is coming because God wants me to learn and to grow. You have to always understand that. So if I am getting attacked at night and I am in Jesus, I haven't done anything wrong. I am trying to live my best, my, my best life in Christ. I'm doing everything right. It means God is teaching me how to deal with demons. That's how you build muscle. You don't become a warrior by laying around. You become a better fighter by fighting. You become a better marksman by shooting. Whether it's an arrow, no matter what it is. You become better at something because you consistently and continually practice. So when God brings challenges to you, it's because he's pushing you to grow. He's not invoking fear in you because God has not given us the spirit of what? Fear. No, there is no fear in love. If there is fear in us, it means we have not been perfected by love. So what God is trying to teach you is how to deal with spirits. The only, way the, the only way the apostles became more powerful is because Jesus put them to pray for people. So if they were not praying for people, they are not getting better. Is that making sense? So if you are dealing with attacks, God is teaching you to pray. God is teaching you not to be afraid. God is teaching you to understand you have power over them. How do you deal with them? Now you need to have a godly response to them, not a panic response. Because if I pray one way and it didn't work, it means I need to check, how did I pray? Let me look in scripture, how was it? If a demon attacks me and my prayer is, Father, help me, I've missed it. When the devil came after Jesus, Jesus never said, Father, help me. When the devil came after any man or woman in scripture, they didn't cry to God. They stood and represented God. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So you're not doing anything wrong. You're being pushed to grow. Hallelujah. Okay, let's keep it going. Uh-huh. Okay, I have a question. How do I know the reach of my jurisdiction? The reach of your jurisdiction. Okay, how many people have you prayed for? I can't count. You can't count. How many people got results? I don't know. <laughs> you don't track to see who has a testimony and who doesn't? Okay, let me ask you. When people, have you, have you prayed for sick people? Yes. Have you seen any miracles happen? Yes. What miracle most commonly happens? When I prayed for people? Yeah. What sickness have you healed mostly? I would say back pain and head pain. Back pain and head pain. Yes. Do you know what that means? God has called you to bring healing to people. Mm. But your healing is in a certain place. God has started you with back pain mm. and head pain. Now you need to go before God and tell God, Father, now I want to heal heart conditions. Mm. Give me the ability to heal heart conditions. Give me the ability to heal heart condition. So you spend time fasting and praying. Then when God brings somebody with a heart condition, don't go looking for them. Yes. God will bring them. That shows that you are ready. Okay. God will bring them. Amen. It is God that brings people. Amen, amen. Somebody or you'll be somewhere where somebody has a heart condition, then you know this is my opportunity. Yes. You pray for them. You will see them getting healed. Then you'll be like, ah. I remember when my son Mike was telling me, Papa Lo, we've seen all kinds of healing. We haven't seen anyone's eyes open. I said, I don't worry, it will happen very soon. One service came, a mother was brought that she had lost both her sight. And I was working on that specific miracle in the presence of God. Mm. Because I'd seen everything. This is one thing that I had not met anyone that I can help with this. So I put my hands on the person. And I was waiting for the power to go through me to heal them. So I was just waiting and I was 
praying but not really praying. I was waiting because he had told me what would happen. And when he came, I said, ah, now it has come. I said, mama, look at me. She said, I can see you. Her eyes were opened. Mm. You see, if you don't tarry in the presence of God, these things don't happen randomly. Yes. You don't just wake up, now I heal everything. No, guys, not like that. It's not going to work. It's not, it's not working. It doesn't, you need to tarry. So if this is what has come automatically, now what more do you want? Lord, I want to see the cripple walk. Father, let me see the cripple walk. You go to the Bible, you meditate on how Peter lifted people. You say, Lord, if they could do it, give me. You see, Peter was not guessing. He said, what I have, I give you. He didn't say, I am asking God to heal. He said, what I have. What I'm teaching you to do is to build yourself that you know what you have. Don't go and just pray and hope for results. Know what you have. You've seen me going to people who are on wheelchairs. And I will bring them out of the wheelchair. Because I know what I have. I can prophesy to anybody because I know what I have. Mm. I can cast demons out of people because I know what I have. I am operating from knowing. I'm not operating from hopefully. So many people are coming to me with problems. I can't deal with hope. Super legit. You, you can't just, oh, maybe God will do something. No, I need to know. When people come to me, they already come knowing. If he prophesies, life will open. If he cast out, this will go. If he heal, if he prays for this, this will be healed. So people come with that confidence. How many pastors do people go to them because somebody is locked up? And they know if I declare it, will, it will open. Or they know that that pastor, pastor, very few people. Do you get what I'm saying? Very few people. That's why you have to build. The Bible says you are supposed to build yourself as an edifice. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit is praying with the understanding of things. It's not random. But the Bible says uh, Paul did uncommon miracles. Mm. So he was tired of seeing the same thing. His miracles were uncommon. Peter's miracles were un unheard, of, were unheard of. Healing people with shadow, we've never seen that. So everybody was just pushing the boundary. You know what I love about, about God is that he can do beyond what you can think or imagine. So you need to imagine the deepest thing that God can do. And he will do it because when you have reached your end, he's just getting started. Amen. He's literally getting started. So there is a creative aspect of the miraculous too. There's a creative aspect. Lord, I just want my eyes to look at somebody and they will get something. I just want to blow on somebody and something will happen. Amen. I don't want to push people. I just, and something will, all this, remember, same spirit, different what? Ministration and administration. I hope I answered you. Okay, let's go to the man of God. Let's go to the man of God. Thank you, Papa. Uh -huh. uh, my question is, uh, uh, the Bible says in Matthew 10, 7, mm -hmm. as you go proclaim this message mm -hmm. of the kingdom um, has come near, uh, heal the sick, rise the dead, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, it happened for me, and I believe in the word of God. Mm -hmm. It was one lady in the church who was going to die because of cancer. Mm -hmm. He called me and asked for prayer, mm -hmm. and I believed in God. I went to the hospital, mm -hmm. believing God to heal her. And God healed the heart. Mm -hmm. So I prayed the heart using uh, anointing products from one man of God. Mm -hmm. After praying for her, she was healed. Until now, she's alive. Mm -hmm. But that resulted for, for a problem for me in the ministry and in the service with God. Mm -hmm. Until now, people, they call me a prophet witch. Mm -hmm. And I've been praying God, fighting to see how I can end that situation because it is painful for me. 
Ah, no, then if you want the power of God, be ready to be hurt. Me, they call me a witch. They call Jesus uh, using Beelzebub. Comes with the territory. Amen. So if you want people's acceptance, you can't operate with the power of God. Amen. Because the power of God brings a distinction. The power of God brings a separation. Amen. Because remember, you are not called to preach to pastors. The ones Amen. who are opposing you are men of God. Amen. So you, do, you are not sent to them. Jesus was not sent to preach to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was called to preach to the common people. Our Amen. mission is to people. That's why I don't care what pastors say. Amen. Why would you care about somebody who never went with you to pray for you, to heal you, to, to build you when you are broken? Why do you care for them? I would be a fool if I care about somebody on the internet talking about how I'm running my ministry and they have no ministry. Amen. They have no church. They want to tell me how to lead a church. Or if they have a church, you look at my church and you look at their church, you feel sorry for them. So why would I listen to somebody like that? There's a rule in life that says, don't take advice from people who have no success. Amen. How can you give me a financial advice and you are broke? Mm. How can you tell me about deliverance we don't see you casting out demons? And if we see it, small demons. But I already can do more than you. Why am I listening to you? It doesn't work like that. So you can't end that situation. Amen. What you should pray when you're persecuted is, Father, stretch your hands and do more that they will know that Jesus of Nazareth is alive. Amen. Amen. That is the only way. Other than that, other than that, there is no way to change that. Amen. Mm -hmm. But after that, uh, I could not be able to keep on the ministry. to shut down. Even other problems in life. That's why I was thinking maybe it was uh, the result of what I did. Maybe I no, 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 no. Amen. No, it wasn't, it wasn't what you did. It had nothing to do with that. Just remember when you prayed for that person, you didn't use what you have. You used what somebody else has. So to maintain that becomes difficult because it wasn't yours, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh. Okay, let's do somebody online. Let's do one, two, and then we'll do somebody online. And then we'll do online because online people have questions too. Okay, we have over 6,000 people. Let's get the likes up. We can't just have, let's get, can we refresh and see the likes? Go up, please. More people to watch this. This is helpful. Yeah. Uh, Father, I want to first say thank you. Oh, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for allowing me here. Mm. Um, one, my family, my wife, my kids, my mother, our lives has changed because of the way you walk with God. So I oh, thank you. We made the glory always return to the Lord Jesus. It's by his grace. Uh, so my question is, mm -hmm. so I've, I've heard about, you know, portals, dimensions. Yes. My question is, does uh, location, time, mm -hmm. where stars are placed, does all that depend on what kind of portal or dimension, realm? No. So the planetary system has nothing to do with the spiritual world. These are physical things. Now, you have to remember, when Satan was kicked out of heaven, okay, as far as God is concerned... The stars and the planet, their center is earth. Even though if you look on the Milky Way, you can't even see us. Are you hearing me? Whatever can be observed from here was created for here. If you read Genesis 1, it says God gave the sun and the moon and the stars to give light on the earth. Meaning they are supposed to do, they are, they are corresponding to the inhabitants of this place to look at that. But when demons were kicked out or devils were kicked out of heaven, some did not get into the earth. The prince of the power of the air, he was where? In the air. There are spirits that are on the moon. There are spirits that are on different planets. There are spirits that are in space. There are spirits that are all hovering around our planet. Not all of them came down. Now, I don't think I should be telling you this, but I will tell you this anyway. Depending on the time, there are spirits that are more active at certain times than other times. Okay? Have you ever noticed sicknesses are always worse at night? 
Are, are you getting it? It's always worse at night. Why? Because some spirits are more empowered at night than they are in the day. There are spirits that are very powerful in the day, but at night they lose their power. Why God did it like that, I don't know. So some of them also, based on where the galaxies or the position of the earth and the rotation of things, they have, they can do certain things and other times they can't. That's why you find that the people who, um, the people who gave us, even though the Bible says the heavens declare his glory, but remember, just like the earth is perverted, some of these things have been perverted too. That's why you have horoscopes and all these things. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So they will say, at a certain time, you have this at a certain No, those things are not actually a lie. Certain spirits have time, power at certain times. But for us who are in Christ, we have power 24 7, 365. Amen. Amen. So we are not controlled by what other things are doing. Absolutely not. I hope I answered you. You did. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, let's get who else was on this side. Let's go to 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 her first, and then. Her. Um, I just wanted to ask you. So sometimes in church we do. I put them. Some, I'm sorry. Sometimes in in service we do declarations with mm. you, mm. and those declarations are very powerful, and everyone's on different levels. Mm. So are we using your jurisdiction? A hundred percent. That's why I'm. That's why you came. Okay. Amen. That's the whole point. That's why I am leading you in prayer. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Remember, there's no powerful prayer. There's only a powerful God who answers prayer. Yeah. Yes. So you, God responds according to the grace given to a person. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get the next question. Before I ask the question, um, I just wanted to say that the Lord, you know, is really using you. Um, and all the attacks are to expel the brood of vipers that are among the church. And the Lord is using you to do that because it's necessary for what we're going into. And so when you're receiving all these attacks, the Lord completely a thousand percent has your back. Oh, I know that for a fact. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm grateful for the encouragement. Yes. Yeah. Um... What sort of divination did Joseph do that was referred to in Genesis 44.5 and Genesis 44.15? Uh, what does it say? Isn't this the cup my master drinks from and also uses for divination? This is a wicked thing you have done. So what, what was this referring to? Uh, was it about the cup bearer and the... Let me go to the verse. Yeah, let's read it in context. It's not hitting me right now, okay. but I'll tell you. Just a few verses before. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sack with food, as much as they can carry, mm -hmm. and put every man's money in his sack's mouth, mm -hmm. and put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, mm -hmm. and his corn money. Mm -hmm. And he did, according to the word... Oh, I know what it is. When the brothers of Joseph came, and he took one of his cups and put it inside. Mm -hmm. Now remember, they were not supposed to know that he was a Jew. Mm. So he had to be like the pagans. So when he said this is the cup of divinations because he was hiding his identity. Mm. It's not because he was a diviner. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, he was a camouflage. He was hiding his identity. You know, because those people took certain items very sacred for their practice and what they did. So he wanted to set them up to make them see like the crime they did was so great that now they're going down and leave the youngest brother so that everybody else can come. He was using a way to, to, to capture them. It was wisdom he was using. Uh -huh. Divination is bad. But he was a figure of speech. He was just trying to get them. Uh, yes. So Jared asks, do you have authority and jurisdiction over your immediate family, extended family, and your bloodline? You have the ability to intercede 
which is jurisdiction because you are part of it, but authority and power now it's about how you have built your communion with God. Because if God wakes you up to see that there is a problem in your family, then God will also give you the power to deal with it. But you can't just have authority and you're not serious about God. You, it just doesn't work. Authority, you don't give a gun to a child. You don't give a sword to a child. It just, it's not the way it works. Amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vanda asks, should we only pray for those who seek us out for prayer or should we just pray for those God has told us to pray for? So when I mean don't go looking for demons, I'm not saying you shouldn't pray for people. I'm saying don't go look for people like the sons of Sceva so that they can lay hands on. No, don't do that. But if I see a brother or a sister that has a problem, I don't even need to tell them I'm praying for them. I can go in my house and ask God for mercy. I can go in my house and ask. That is what the Christian life is. The problem is everyone wants to be seen. That's good. I'm praying for you. I don't need to tell you I'm praying for you. If I genuinely want to see your life changed, I will be practicing my spiritual level. But when I pray for you and I see you testifying, I know oh, what I prayed worked. I don't need to come and announce it to you. Amen. That is true maturity and growth. Uh huh. Um, exquisite says, how do you know the type of spirit you are dealing with? I've experienced many demons, but I'm not sure the types of demons. Well, you look at the manifestation. What are they doing? You know, if you don't have a prophetic ability, you wouldn't know their identity. But you, it's easy to know. You just look at what they are doing. Are they causing sicknesses, which is infirmities? Are they causing, uh, um, are they causing uh, limitations? Are they causing uh, crippling? What are they doing? Because a demon is never silent. They are always doing something. So that's the way to know. Next one. Um, mm. Keila asked, how do you know you've provoked a demon or if it's God's will to break you? God would not use a demon to break you. God will use situations to break you. Amen. Demons come for you to be promoted. Amen. Situations Amen. to grow you and to break you. Because you can't bind a situation. You have to go through it. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yup. Um, this one says, what does it mean when you have dreams of casting out demons? Does that mean you can cast out demons? No, it means God is grooming you for that. Amen. He's showing you this is what you need to be doing. Start praying towards it. Uh-huh. One or two more so that we can pray. Okay. Um, a lot of them are asking the same thing, just difference between prayer and Okay, this one. Um, Papa, does not being baptized stop you from operating in authority and power? Also, how and when do you know now you have the go-ahead to start operating? Is it after being released? Of course, that's why you need a mentor because not everyone can hear from God. And you want to fulfill all righteousness. Follow after Jesus. Now, am I saying that God will only use you after baptism? Absolutely not. God can use anyone at any time. But as a child of God, you want to fulfill all righteousness. If Jesus did something, I want to do it too. Amen. That should be our heart. Amen. Whatever I've seen the Lord do, that's what I do. Because he did what his father does. We need to do what our Lord and Savior does. That is wisdom. All right. I want you to grab what you want to give to God. Find your best gift. Go to the Lord Jesus. And give it to God. Whether it's 10 billion, 10 trillion, whatever it is that God has given you, that you want to honor God with, I want you to go and give it to God and then we'll be back and we'll pray. Amen. Let us worship and bow down For He is our God he is our God, let us make a joyful sound Unto our God, unto our God Let us worship and bow down For He is our God, He is our God Let us make a 
joyful sound unto our God, unto our God. He's been good to us, good to us, so good. He's been good to us.
matter what the problem is I know you can get me out of it I can always count on you I'm yours and I'm proud of it Show me your grace Show me your ways I'm seeking after you Show me your face I wanna know more Keeping it 100, I was running, I was running Had to run the hard way But you always up to something If you said it, then it's done I know it every time I pray It's done I won't walk over Mercy all my days All I can say He made a way For real I was down bad, I'll cast He changed the way I live, I've been riding around I'm on too long, Jesus Take the wheel, take control I know my fate is sealed He made a way, for real I was down bad, I'll cast He changed the way I live, I've been riding around I'm on too long, Jesus Take the wheel, take control I know my fate is sealed Finish I'm on a mission, I gotta finish, yeah. yeah Made a commitment to go to distance, yeah. yeah Made in his image, I can't diminish, yeah no. I'm about his business, I gotta witness, yeah Every second and every minute, yeah As long as you with me, I got no limits, yeah Man, I'm so dependent, gotta admit it, yeah The burden been lifted, so I ain't tripping, nah, no. nah no. That's why I'm true to this Had to put a moment, I had to bring the crew in it Ain't no way to ruin it, it just keep on renewing it I rock the Gucci with the gold crucifix switch Oh no, he ain't through with me, yes He made a way, for real I was down bad, I'll cast, he changed the way I live, I've been riding around, I'm on too long Jesus, take the wheel, take control I know my fate is sealed He made a way, for real I was down bad, I'll cast, he changed the way I live, I've been riding around, I'm on too long Jesus
giving is an opportunity for you to partner in what the Lord is doing in this ministry. And remember, when you give, you get to partake under the grace of this house, and God loves a cheerful giver. Our God is a God of sacrifice, so He honors your sacrifice. Go to ProfitLovey.com and follow the instructions on the screen. And thank you so much for all your giving. Hey, Revelation Nation, quick PSA. Neither Revelation Church or Prophet Lovey will reach out to you directly in regards to donations. Or one-on-ones. Or private prophecy. So for all giving information, please visit our official website, prophetlovey.com or revelationchurchla.org. We love you, family. And Jesus loves you more. Stay safe out there. Hola mi gente, esperemos que Revelation Nation esté mejor que nunca. Queremos darles una precaución para cuando estén dando, donando y sembrando el trabajo del Señor en nuestra iglesia. Si alguien les contacta recorriendo fondos, solicitando cualquier tipo de donación monetaria, les queremos avisar que no es el profeta ni nadie en la iglesia. Nosotros nunca jamás les escribiríamos pidiendo dinero, así que para evitar todo tipo de estafa, por favor, solo usen las plataformas oficiales para donar a la iglesia. Se pueden encontrar en profitlovey.com o en revelationchurchla.org Dale mi gente que Dios les bendiga Hola mi gente, esperemos que Revelation Nation esté mejor que nunca. Queremos darles una precaución para cuando estén dando, donando y sembrando el trabajo del Señor en nuestra iglesia. Si alguien les contacta recorriendo fondos, solicitando cualquier tipo de donación monetaria, les queremos avisar que no es el profeta ni nadie en la iglesia. Nosotros nunca jamás les escribiríamos pidiendo dinero, así que para evitar todo tipo de estafa, por favor, solo usen las plataformas oficiales para donar a la iglesia. Se pueden encontrar en profitlovey.com o en en revelationchurchla.org Dale mi gente que Dios les bendiga Thank you so much for watching Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and continue to spread the gospel with your participation Don't forget to turn on your notifications so you don't miss a single teaching all year long We love you, God bless you Thanks for watching Giving is an opportunity for you to partner in what the Lord is doing in this ministry. And remember, when you give, you get to partake under the grace of this house, and God loves a cheerful giver. Our God is a God of sacrifice, so He honors your sacrifice. Go to ProfitLovey.com and follow the instructions on the screen. And thank you so much for all your giving. Hey, Revelation Nation, quick PSA. Neither Revelation Church or Prophet Lovey will reach out to you directly in regards to donations. Or one-on-ones. Or private prophecy. So for all giving information, please visit our official website, ProfitLovey.com or RevelationChurchLA.org. We love you, family. And Jesus loves you more. Stay safe out there. Hola mi gente, esperemos que Revelation Nation esté mejor que nunca. Queremos darles una precaución para cuando estén dando, donando y sembrando el trabajo del Señor en nuestra iglesia. Si alguien les contacta recorriendo fondos, solicitando cualquier tipo de donación monetaria, les queremos avisar que no es el profeta ni nadie en la iglesia. Nosotros nunca jamás les escribiríamos pidiendo dinero, así que para evitar todo tipo de estafa, por favor, solo usen las plataformas oficiales para donar a la iglesia. Se pueden encontrar en ProfitLovey.com o en en revelationchurchla.org Dale mi gente que Dios les bendiga Thank you so much for watching Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and continue to spread the gospel with your participation Don't forget to turn on your notifications so you don't miss a single teaching all year long We love you, God bless you Thanks for watching Okay don't kill them, Esther. Kill them after. <laughs> uh, we are back, and uh, God is good. So I want us to pray together that God will give us patience that we need to walk with Him, to function with Him, that we may become all that He wants us to be. Yes. Father, I pray for everyone that is watching. Father, You have ordained for us different positions and different places 
not based on our goodness, but based on your sovereign grace and your assignment for our lives. My Lord and my God, we present ourselves before you because it is only by your grace, by your power, that we are able to become all that you have ordained for us to be. Father, we look to you because you are our hope, you are our salvation. And Lord, we know it is only by your grace and by your power that we can excel from where we are. So my Lord and my God, we put and set our eyes on you. You who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We pray for patience as you process us because we do not want to shipwreck. Father, there are many that went ahead of their time and they were destroyed. There are some who went and they were not built in their obedience to you and they were destroyed. Like the young prophet died because of the old prophet, because he despised your instruction. Father, we don't want to be those who are operating on our own capacity, but we want to be those who are operating from your grace, in your purpose, and in your will for our life. Father, we ask for forgiveness for every time we have jumped the gun. We have gone out and because of zeal. And we have discovered that there is foolish zeal. We can do wrong while intending to do right. Father, have mercy on us. Forgive us today. Cleanse us today. And position us. Position us, O oh Lord. Position us, O oh Lord, full of grace and mercy. That we may mature in the way that you want us to. Your word says you make all things beautiful in its time. Our time will be different, O oh Lord. My time was different. My brother's time will be different. My sister's time will be different. Those who are watching, their time will be different. But all in all, we will glorify you. So Father, give us the grace to be patient, to wait for our time. But while we are waiting, we should be occupied growing, maturing in your word and in prayer. Father, remove the desire to have glory and fame and fortune. Remove the desire for us to be show-offs, to show that we are used by God. Father, we don't want any kind of vain glory. We don't want that. We only want to please you. We want to please you. That is our goal, to please you, Holy Spirit. So, Father, we give ourselves to you. I pray for everyone that is watching, and I pray, O oh Lord, empower your people today. I extend the grace you have given me even unto them. Let the prophetic be activated in them. Oof. Let the miraculous be extended to them. Let deliverance also manifest in them. As they are under this covering, under this cloud, use them for your glory. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your kindness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and everybody said, Amen. You are blessed and highly favored. May the Lord keep you until tomorrow. Blessings.